Hello and welcome to my third sew along for Nomi Patterns. I'm so excited about this pattern, ME2073. View A is the crop top and it's fully lined and it has a twist detail in the center as well as adjustable straps. View B is the skirt and so the skirt details include a drop waist which I am so obsessed with this feature for 2024. And on the yoke detail, it's hard to see on this photo, but there are pointed yoke details. So there's a pointed yoke here and a pointed yoke here. It's pretty, a slight point. Um, it's easier to see it on the line art details. So if you can see the pointed yoke detailing there, uh, it does include gathers and then an invisible zip on the side. What I love about this pattern is it's just fun and flirty and to me screams spring. I took my photos out in the field because that's just what I envision frolicking through fields. Not that many people do that, but you know, frolicking through fields, going to the beach, having a picnic, which is like an ode to the gingham print. Um, I just think this is a, such a fun, versatile piece. You can hack the yoke to not be pointed. There's so many things you could do with this pattern. I also think it would be really cute if you had a contrast. So maybe you did like, for instance, maybe I would have made this in a solid black or white and then had a print on the bottom or a print on the top and a solid on the bottom. So I think it's gonna be really fun. You can mix and match this garment to however you like. Obviously I did my prints together and I did my solids together but you could mix and match, which I think is super cute. So I love this pattern. It is probably one of my favorites thus far and I can't wait to see what you do with it. For this video, we will be sewing view B, which is the skirt. ME2073, view A is the top and view B is the bottom. There's no variety between these two fabrics except to show it in a plain versus a printed look. Um, the tops are the same, the skirts are the same, nothing's changed. The A is the top, B is the skirt. This pattern comes in sizes 8 through 26. You can find all of your body measurements and finished garment measurements here on the back side of the pattern. Suggested fabrics for this pattern include batiks, chambray, charmeuse, cotton lawn, cotton blends, gauze, gingham, linen blends, poplin, and silky types. You can also use those same fabrics for your lining. This pattern also calls for lightweight and fusible facing, as well as two zippers, one five inch for view A and one nine inch for the skirt in view B. The five inch zipper is a separating zipper and the nine inch zipper is an invisible zipper. View B is our skirt and it has five pattern pieces starting with pattern piece five. This is the yoke front. You're going to cut on the fold one. Pattern piece six is the yoke back. You will also cut this on the fold and cut one. Pattern piece seven is our front and back. You're going to cut on the fold, cut two. Pattern piece eight is the side front and back. You're going to cut four. And last but not least is pattern piece nine. This is our waistband. You're going to cut one fabric and you're also going to interface this piece. Before we start sewing, go ahead and interface pattern piece number nine. For step one, we're gonna go ahead and transfer our darts to our fabric and then we are going to stitch them up for pattern piece number five. So go ahead and transfer the darts onto your fabric and go ahead and sew them up. Once you've finished sewing up your darts, we're gonna go ahead and press both darts towards the center. So go ahead and go to your iron machine, do that and come back. We're gonna repeat this process for pattern piece six. Now that we've pressed pattern piece five, we're gonna go ahead and draw in our darts for pattern piece six and go ahead and sew them up and press towards the center as well. Once the darts are sewn in, we're gonna go ahead and press towards the center, just like we did for pattern piece five. Now that we've pressed our darts to the center on both pattern pieces five and six, we're going to lay pattern piece five and pattern piece six face to face. And we're going to attach on the left side. So five eighths of an inch seam allowance just on the left side. We are going to keep the right side open because we will be attaching a zipper. 
Once you've finished that stitch line, go ahead and clean finish however you see fit. I'm going to use my serger, so I'm just gonna serge these together. I know the illustrations call for the seams to be opened, but to be honest, serging both sides is just gonna take up so much time, so I'm gonna serge them together. Next, we're going to take our interfaced pattern piece nine, and the directions say that on the unnotched side, so you can clearly see that this side is notched, on the unnotched side, we are going to press up a half an inch. So what I like to do to make sure that I get a clean line is I just go ahead to my machine and I stitch a line at a half inch. And that way I know when I go to press and I go to press it, it's gonna be exactly half of an inch all the way down. So go ahead. If you wanna sew that line in, go ahead and do that now. If not, you're really good at measuring and eyeballing it. We're gonna turn it up half inch and press. So go ahead and do that and come back. Next, we are going to attach our waistband to the yokes and we are going to connect it all the way around. So go ahead and pin that and come back. Okay, once you've pinned it all together, we're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch from one side of the waistband all the way to the next. Now that the waistband is connected, we're gonna go ahead and go to the iron and press the waistband and the waistband seam allowance up. So go ahead and go to the ironing board and press those up. Now that we've pressed the seam allowance up towards the waistband, we are going to attach our invisible zipper. You should go to the iron and push the zipper teeth flat. Normally it has a little, it looks like this but I've already pressed mine, so it is now flat. So go ahead and press your zipper, and then we are going to attach our visible zipper to our skirt. Now on the waistband, I know that the pattern piece didn't call for a notch, but I went ahead and put a little tiny notch at the place where we're gonna fold the waistband, and I also put a notch there to help me as a guide, so I did it on both sides. You can see a notch there and a notch there. So I put it as a guide because that's where we're going to be placing our zipper. So the top of our zipper is going to be at that notch. We're not going to take the zipper all the way up here or stop it right here. It, our zipper is going to start and stop at the fold line of the waistband, which is where I place that notch. Whenever I start an invisible zipper, I know they're tricky, but what I like to do is I lay it like how it's going to be when it's finished. And so I lay it face up. And then the easiest trick that I learned when I was in fashion school, and I know there's so many great tutorials on YouTube, um, Butte Du Jour, hers are literally the best on her Nomi patterns. So if you can't follow along with me, and hopefully you will, but if you can't follow along with me, then I would recommend viewing hers. She has a really easy, simple hack, but I'm going to try my best to follow the instructions. And so what I do is I place my zipper just like this and then I take it and I flip it. So originally it was up like this and now I've flipped it and then I'm going to pin. So when I sew my 5 eighths of an inch, now it will look like this when it's clean finished. I hope that makes sense, but that's the easiest way I do it. So I start with my zipper laying up how it would be when it's finished and then I grab it and I flip it so that the teeth are gonna be along that five eighths of an inch seam line, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pin and baste and come back and show you what that looks like. Also, just to act as a guide, if it's really simple, I love to put a stitch line at five eighths so I know that when I'm placing my teeth, I just go a little bit over that mark and I know I have it at the right place. So again, I'm matching up the edge of my zipper where the plastic part is. Let's see if we can get that in focus right here where the plastic part is, and I'm gonna match that up with a notch on my skirt, and I'm gonna place the teeth just right over that line. Now again, this is way more complicated than it has to be. Like I said, Beauge your door, she has a beautiful tutorial, but here's another way to install an invisible zipper. So I'm just gonna follow along the line all the way down.
So make sure you go ahead and swap out your foot for your invisible zipper foot or regular zipper foot, whatever foot you have. And let's go ahead and attach our zipper to our skirt. Okay, now that we have our zipper attached to one side, what I like to do is zip the zipper up just to confirm that it does zip. But I also like to match and notch the teeth. So I know that when I line the zipper up on the other side, that this is going to line up on the waistband. And so again, I mark it on both sides so that that way it lines up and it's a match and I don't have to worry about this being wonky and not matching. All right, so just like I did last time, I'm gonna lay it like it's normal, but then I'm going to flip it to match the teeth. And again, I'm gonna line up where I've marked that notch right here so that it matches. Again, pinning only through one side, but it's hard to get this on film. So I didn't pin it all the way through, just on the one side. And again, my notch is right here, so I'm gonna make sure the top of the zipper matches up with that notch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin all the way down until we meet down here. So go ahead and do that and come back. Now that I've finished attaching both sides, we want to go ahead and zip it up to make sure that everything matches. And here we are, perfect match. Next, we're going to go ahead and connect the bottom part of these yokes. And so I'm going to match notch to notch. And then I'm going to sew 5 eighths of an inch all the way down and I'm going to connect here at the zipper, so I like to do this with my zipper foot. So we're gonna go from here all the way down, five eighths of an inch. Now that it's connected, go ahead and clean finish the inside, however you'd like, whether that be zigzag or overlock. Next, we are going to fold our waistband over and we are going to pin all the way around and then we are going to take it to the machine and stitch in the ditch here so that it will catch on both sides and complete our waistband. All right, now that our waistband is attached to our yoke, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and I'm gonna grab my six pieces for the bottom of my skirt that we're gonna attach here. These are my pattern piece eights, and I should have one, two, three, four, and these are my pattern piece sevens, and I should have two, one for my front and one for my back. What I like to do before I stitch any of these together is I'm going to go ahead and clean finish or serge all sides of my skirts right now before I do anything so that way they're already clean finished. All right, this is my pattern piece seven. I'm then going to lay a pattern piece eight on this side and connect the side and a pattern piece eight on this side and connect on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that and show you what it looks like. As we're connecting, make sure we're connecting notches. So my notches, even though I've clean finish, I can still see that I have notches right here matching up with those notches. All right, so this is my gigantic piece seven and eight connected. So you can see sevens underneath here. And I've placed eight attached to the side seam and eight and attached to the side seam of seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these both sides up five eighths of an inch. Because my camera can simply not capture how much fabric I have on the table right now, 
Once you connect your pattern piece seven and eight together, you're going to take both pieces because you've connected one front to each side and one back to each side. You're going to connect them both together to create one big piece. So go ahead and do that and come back. Now that we have attached our panels together, we need to create gathering stitches at the top so that we can gather it and attach it to our yokes of our skirt. So we do that by changing our sewing machine thread length to the longest length possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew this panel by panel. I'm not gonna go all the way around because I feel like there's a bigger chance for the thread to break. So I just do it from this side panel and then as soon as I get to the next side panel, I will stop and then I'll come back to and do a second stitch a quarter of an inch down and I'll keep doing that panel by panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you what that looks like. So as you can see, I just put in two lines of stitching leave the tails long because after we go around and do this panel by panel we will then pull to create the gathers so go ahead and do that to each panel again i like to break it up per panel because if you go for too long it could break off while you're gathering and that's just frustrating so do whatever method works the best for you okay now that we've gathered all of our skirt panels we are now going to attach it to our yoke and then sew them together at five eighths of an inch. So our gathers, make sure you match up notches. So there are notches here and let's make sure we match them up to the skirt notches. Once you have pinned all the way around, you're gonna go ahead and do five eighths inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that and come back. Once you have connected the yoke to the skirt gathering, go ahead and press, and then you'll be able to create more of that curved, it will look neater once it's pressed. So go ahead and press, and then press it towards the yoke, clean finish on the inside. The last step is to clean finish our edge. So I've double rolled it twice, and we're finished with the skirt. Well done, we have finished. I hope you enjoyed this sew along. Please tag me in your creations at Miss Alicia Grace. I'd love to see what you do and how you put your flair on my third design for Nomi. Until next season, 